steal them, but they're fruits that humans like, guess what? Humans are going to steal it. If you plant things that are too attractive to orangutans, you may in fact draw them directly to the acacia plantation. So what you probably need to do is figure out what to plant that are things that just orangutans like and not humans in the plantation. And probably near the acacias or the Indian plantation, you want to plant a buffer zone of things orangutans don't want to eat. Preferably one they can't see past, that would probably stop them or at least slow down their getting into the acacias. Again, if you know something about orangutans and their foods, you can do a better job of advising on how to do this in a way that's likely to work. The last one, oh, that's where the corridor is supposed to go. The last one is the peat dome idea. This was the coal mine. This is probably not a peat dome, but it would look something like this. Uh, peat actually builds up in domes over long periods of time, so you get these little hilly things. And uh, the, the coal company said, well, they had a nice peat dome. The forest was good there. And they were going to set it aside as a conservation area. And they thought that maybe they could use it to move orangutans that were in danger of the mining. They could move it to the peat dome, and the orangutans could live there. So you say, that's a really nice idea. How big is the peat dome? They say 30 hectares. Well, one female orangutan in that part of Indonesia uses a minimum of 100 hectares. So guess what? That peat dome wouldn't even hold one orangutan, let alone several. So nice idea, but much too small to act as a proper uh, translocation or conservation area. We then asked, well, um, and what are going to happen? What's going to happen around the peat dome? And they said, oh, well, we're going to mine there. So pit, open pit mining, so they're going to dig down. Now it turns out that peat forests, peat swamp forests, and peat domes are very sensitive to water conditions. If the water isn't right, they die. So guess what's going to happen if they dig all around this peat dome down 800 meters? It's just going to drain it up, dry. So they will kill the peat dome. Point again, if you get people who know a bit about forest ecology or if you get people who know more about orangutans, you can take a situation like this and you could probably save them some time putting together a project that isn't going to work and possibly come up with something that could be better. So I'm certainly hoping that we can be part of the group of people there who can offer some <coughs> advice in terms of what to do that would be better for the orangutans. When we know them better, we have to know better what the Kutai orangutans do to give them good advice. But certainly once we do, I'm hoping we can be part of the bridge between the companies and the national park in terms of trying to do better things for orangutans. So the take home message, I think the orangutans in Kutai National Park uh, and in East Kalimantan, they're, they're doing, they're alive and they're well, and they're doing very well in Kutai. This is not a population that's been wiped out. There's actually probably quite a good population in there, and it's thriving if we take care of them. They appear to be exceptionally resilient and resourceful. All of the older orangutans that I showed you, the adults, would have had to have lived through the terrible fires and droughts of 97, 98. That's only 12 years ago. And orangutan females don't start reproducing till they're 15. So Agnes and Uchi both lived through that terrible period. They made it, came out somehow smelling like roses. Lots of orangutans probably didn't, but a lot of them apparently did. They nonetheless clearly need help. If we don't do a good job of taking care of the national park, then it's going to go the same way that everything else has. So I think the opportunity that we have is a great opportunity to do some good, both in terms of research. I think these orangutans probably do some strange stuff that we haven't seen before. So it should be quite informative to see what they are, in fact, doing. And I think for conservation, because we do have a well-intentioned community that would like to do better, I think there's a really good opportunity to act as consultants and try and advise and help them find ways to do a better job of managing orangutans in the ways that, that are more orangutan friendly. So thank you very much for listening. We hope we can stop more and more pinkies of coming out of the forest. And this is just my list of thanks of all of the people and agencies that have helped us get where we got so far. Thank you very much.